And now it's time for an installment in the history of fashion with Archibald, the part of the show where Archibald comes out and shares a lesson in the history of fashion. In the olden days, the biggest craze with the folks who lived back then of the bourgeoisie and accessory for the women and the men. Not pant or shirt, nor blouse or skirt, or anything made from thread, but woven hair from horse or bear situated on the head. Our astonishing wigs! They're enormously big! We love our astonishing wigs! Astonishing wigs, astonishing wigs, do you like our astonishing wigs? Most famous queens of greatest means to the lonely Duchess Fair ran a common thread upon the head for those unhappy with their hair. Now you can bet that even pets and livestock would confer. So wigs they took to improve the look of their bristles and their fur. Our astonishing wigs! They're enormously big! We love our astonishing wigs! Astonishing wigs, astonishing wigs, do you like our astonishing wigs? We are the pigs in wigs, yes our locks are very big And we squeal without a care in our artificial hair Our hearts are most enthralled, since pigs like us are bald So we'll sing and we'll smile and we'll probably flaunt the style of our astonishing wigs quick, quick. And so it's said, this fashion spread from the lofty to the low. From prince to pig, the look was big and continued thus to grow. Hence girls and boys would dress their toys in manufactured mops. Then bush and tree soon too would see small wigs upon their tops. Ah. Our astonishing wigs! They're enormously big! We love our astonishing wigs! Astonishing wigs, astonishing wigs, do you like our astonishing wigs? These are wigs in wigs, yes our locks are very big, and they dance without a care in their artificial hair. We don't panic if their hair gets problematic. We just need to back and smile for the fabricated style. Of astonishing wigs, astonishing wigs. So you think I'm silly? Well. Yes. This has been an installment in the history of fashion with Archibald. Tune in next time to hear Archibald say... So then, after a while, wigs went out of fashion and everyone turned to bell bottoms. Oh, brother. Our astonishing wigs! And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. It's Christmas Eve and Larry is anxiously awaiting the arrival of Santa Claus with a plate of cookies. Oh, Santa, I can't wait for you to come. I just can't wait for you to come. And I've got cookies, three yummy cookies, just for you for when you come, only for you for when you come. Because it's Christmas. Could that be Santa? Could that be him? Could it be the one who brings presents for a cucumber like me? A good cucumber like me. Larry is surprised to be greeted not by Santa, but a crafty bank robber. Who are you? I'm a bank robber! And I've come to rob your bank, yes, I've come to rob your bank, and I've come to take your dimes and swipe your nickels. So stand back, step aside, you silly pickle, and let me in. Although frightened by the intruder, in the spirit of Christmas, Larry makes an offering. I'm not a banker, I have no bank, my robbing friend, but I have cookies, three yummy cookies, and I don't have nickels, but please take my robbing friend, eat one of these, my robbing friend, they are for Santa, but you may have one. The bank robber is truly touched by Larry's goodwill, but Larry, although momentarily distracted, is still excited about seeing Santa. Oh, Santa. I'm a robber. I, can't I came wait to rob you your to bank. Come. Yes, I, I came to rob your to bank. Come. And I've got cookies. You share a cookie. Two yummy cookies. I yummy cookie. Just though I'd love her when you time. Need perhaps for another time. time. Because it's Christmas. Could that be Santa? Could that be him? Could it be the one who brings presents for a cucumber like me? A good cucumber like me. Once again, it is not Santa who has come to Larry's door, but this time a savage Norseman. Who are you? 
I'm a Viking, and I've come to take your land. Oh yes, I've come to take your land, and I've come to burn your crops and steal your horses. And I've come to step on your chickens and soil your quilts. Hey. Although frightened by the intruder, in the spirit of Christmas, Larry makes an offering. I don't have plans. I don't have props, my Viking friend, but I have cookies. Two yummy cookies. And I don't have horses. But please take this, my Viking friend. Eat one of these, my Viking friend. They are for Santa. But you may have one. The Viking is also touched by Larry's goodwill, but Larry's thoughts are still with Santa. Oh, Santa. I'm a Viking. I can't I wait came for to take you your land. Oh, yes, I can't wait for to take you your land. I've got a cookie. You shared a cookie. A yummy cookie. A yummy cookie. Just oh, for I you, love bar, when you come. Quilts. Me for I you, don't bar, when you come. Because it's Christmas. Could that be Santa? Could that be him? Could it be the one who brings presents for a cucumber like me? A good cucumber like me. Larry is greeted now by an agent of the Internal Revenue Service. Who are you? I'm from the IRS. And I've come to attack your... Oh, Santa, I can't wait for you to come. I just can't wait for you to come. It's finally Santa. It's finally him. At last, the one who brings presents for a cucumber like me. A good cucumber like me. I'm Santa, and I've come to bring you gifts. Oh, yes, I've come to bring you gifts. And I've come to stock your stocking. Go, ho, ho, ho. And I've come to jiggle my belly and wiggle my nose. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that my belt? And what are you doing with my hat? So you're the ones. Wait a minute, I can explain. We've changed. Nobody messes with Santa. You know that, don't you? You've been very naughty, and I've got a list. Did you claim that? Merry Christmas! And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Larry the Cucumber presents in a sequential image stereophonic multimedia event, the Song of the Sabu. This is a song about a boy. A song about a little boy and his sabus. A song about a little boy and his three sabus. The little boy who had a thick sabu, a sad sabu, and a mute sabu. And also a hippo. Um, um, this is me at the airport. This is my Aunt Ruth. This is me at a bullfight. This is me fighting a bull. <laughs> this is me and the bull. Ah! This is me and the bull, and I think that's the bull's cousin. He's a sabu. Hold it! You call this a multimedia event? This is a slide projector and a bed sheet. And what on earth is a sabu anyway? It's kind of like a cow. See? Yes. Well, very good. Uh, this could be interesting. Carry on. Boy is riding with Sabu. Boy is riding with Sabu. Into town in his canoe. Into town in his canoe. Six Sabu is rowing and sneezing. Achoo moo moo, achoo moo moo, achoo moo moo, achoo moo 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 moo. 
again. You can't just start a song and leave it hanging like that. You know, I've come to expect a lot more from you. This is quite disappointing. I'm going to have to speak to Bob about this. Oh, look, a Cebu. Cebu. No, wait. That's a water buffalo. No more song about Cebu. Need another verse or two. Audience is standing and leaving. Bye bye moo, bye bye moo, bye bye moo, bye bye moo, moo, moo. I want my money back. Yeah, that'd be good. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. There lived a man so long ago, his memories but faint. Was not admired, did not inspire, like president or saint. But people came from far and near with their afflicted pets for a special cure. They knew for sure wouldn't come from other pets. Whoa! This is a song for your poor sick penguin. He's got a fever and a toes are blue. But if I sing to your poor sick penguin, he will feel better in a day or two. You lay, 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 yaddy, 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 yaddy. He's gone a little loopy, in case you haven't heard. Here's a couple penicillin for your sickly arctic void. No skeptic could explain just how, nor could one off three, but the wondrous deeds that went on in that little alpine hut. Some would stand in silence while some just scratched their scalps for the curious ways of the yodeling veterinarian of the Alps. Whoa! Good news on the penguin, Doc. He's up and kicking. This is a song for your pregnant kitty. She's looking nauseous and a weak tap too. But if I sing to your pregnant kitty, she will feel better in a day or two. You lay, 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 Jump in your car, drive into the city, buy a jug of milk for your nauseated kitty. The practice grew, their profits flew until one fateful day. When the nurse who did assist the doc asked for a raise in pay. The doctor pondered this a while, sat back and scratched his scalp, then said, no way, Jose. To the nurse of the yodeling veterinarian of the Alps. Whoa! Good news on the kitty, Doc. She's feeling great. Six kittens. Main going after you. This is the fun for your bear trap teddy. He looks fun comfy. Think I'd be too. But if I think... Yeah, 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 yeah
like he's good. Now the moral of our story, it's the point we hope we've made. When you go a little loopy, better keep your nurse well paid. While some just scratch their scalps For the curious ways of the yodeling veterinarian of the Alps Okay, Bob, follow me Larry, I can't see you How am I supposed to follow you? Just move this way Okay, you ready for this? Y you got me really curious, Larry. What are you up to? You'll see. <gasps> well, it's a curtain. Bob, it's not just any curtain. It's an extreme redo crying edition curtain. So? While you were on vacation last week, the crew from Extreme Redo Crying Edition came in and redid the kitchen. We've had a total kitchen makeover. How you feeling right now, man? I feel good. Uh, you hear that? He feels good! <laughs> well, my friend, get ready to feel great! Pull that curtain! Ooh! You guys are amazing! Light blue walls, a throw pillow, the place has been completely transformed! It, uh, looks the same to me. Oh yeah, go ahead, let it all out! What? Uh, where's Quirty? Hi, Quirty! Greetings, Larry. Ah! Quirty? Is that you? Oh yeah, extreme redo. Quirty's needed an upgrade for ten years. Looking good, buddy. I feel like a million bits. Ha ha, get it? Bits. <laughs> good one! <laughs> hey, yeah, we've upgraded his humor chip. <laughs> LOL! <laughs> <laughs> I got mail. You've never had mail before, buddy. And now you do. How's that feel? I feel like a million bits. Aww, that, that is so sweet. <laughs> Dear Bob and Mary, my mom and dad are always telling me stuff I don't want to do. Like making my bed, doing my homework, practicing piano, that kind of stuff. All I want to do is play. What should I do? Your friend, Liam Young. Wow, that's pretty cool. We are hip, happening, and now, thanks to Extreme Redo. I, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. You can just cry if you want. You want to cry? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, come on, let go. So oh, awesome. tomato flow. Children, Here you go, Liam. Roll film. Once upon a time, in the small Italian town of Bologna Salami, Hey, buongiorno! Hey, what are you doing? There lived a lonely toy maker named Gelato. Just because I talk to toys doesn't make me lonely. Besides, I've got ducks! <laughs> and his assistant, Cricket. I am not a cricket! His assistant named Cricket. I am a caterpillar! Well, that is only half true. Kind and honest Gelato was never married, so he had no children he could call his own. I call this one. Uh, that's not a child. Oh. His three beloved brothers were mysteriously lost at sea while delivering meatballs to the small island of Boyardee. <laughs> so Gelato poured all of his loneliness and love into the toys he carved for the joy of others. One of the toys, a wooden duck, was so realistic, a family of motherless ducklings followed it home. Gelato loved the ducks like they were his own children. Oh, how he loved to teach them, and oh, how they loved to listen. He taught them about right and wrong, responsibility, honesty, and monopoly. Greg is fascinated with real estate. Cricket was glad Gelato was happier, even though ducks made him nervous. 
They eat caterpillars! Well, good thing you're a cricket. I have got to change my name. And so the ducklings listened closely as Gelato taught them everything they needed to know. Look at little Liliana as her mother shows her how to gather breakfast from a chicken or make milkshakes from a cow. Even Steven's struggling, Papa taught him when to take a bow. Wow. Nothing's missing cause they listened when their parents taught them how. A mother and a father know the ways to live life right. So listen little children and your days will turn out. Pistachio tree. Very special. Well, at least you could let me pay you a little something, Parcheesy. Parcheesy? No need to pay! It's all yours! Hmm. Something smells fishy. No, it smells like pistachios. Hooray! A bonus piece of wood for a bonus toy. Come, little ducklings. Daddy's gonna carve you a brother. He says, bad idea written all over it. Really? Must be tiny writing. Good night, little ones. Bruce, let's hope that beat guard helps your snoring. <coughs> Gary, it's not polite to eat worms in bed. Good night, Greg. Sweet dreams, little ones. Prepare yourself for a long night, Cricket. All throughout the night, Gelato poured his love into this new and very special wood carving. who love you the most, your parents. Why should I listen to my parents? I want what's best for me. Because you are too young to know what is best for you, Pistachio. Trust me, 
I was a boy once too. Tomorrow, we'll take a field trip for your first lesson in life. But for now, we must sleep. Well, okay. I guess we can try it your way. For now. That's my log, uh, boy. Good night, Cricket. I am a caterpillar. Good night, Pistachio. You will see. Gelato is a good father. He has learned great things from his own father. And you will learn those things from him. If you will listen. Well, if I don't, I'm not hanging around a bunch of ducks. A team. What? It's not a bunch of ducks. It is a team of ducks. Like a gaggle of geese or a herd of cattle. Never heard of cattle. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. So Gelato took his ducklings and pistachio to the art museum, where he would use the paintings to teach a very important lesson. Just pictures? Boring. You'll see, Pistachio. There's nothing like art to help you find your way. Hey, Art! Aye! What's up, Gelato? Which way to the sheep paintings? Down and to the left, past the prodigal. Thanks, Art. <laughs> Gary. You should have gone before we left home. <laughs> now, here's what I really wanted to show you. Sheep! Never heard of sheep. It's a flock of sheep. You're thinking of cattle. It was the shepherd's job to take care of 100 sheep. One sheep ran away and got lost. Even though there were still 99 more, the shepherd left the 99 to go off into a storm in search of that one lost sheep. Why would he do that? Well, because he was a good shepherd and he loved all the sheep. He didn't want to lose a single one. Why did the little sheep run away? Nobody knows. Maybe a wolf dressed like a sheep talked him into it. Maybe he thought he could find something more fun than following his shepherd. Maybe he thought he knew best. By the time the shepherd found him, he was cold and miserable. He knew he should have listened to the shepherd. Some children act the same way. They foolishly think they know best, that they don't need to listen to their parents. Not me. I'm no fool, no sorry. Nicely put, Cricket. You should sit on my mouth and finish all of my stories. Moralizing runs very deep in my family. <laughs> so much is in one of those art books. And they're only five cents. I'd be happy to go buy it for you. Can I have five cents, huh, can I? Wow, that's great that you've taken an interest in art so soon. But five cents is all the money I have. But it's filled with artwork that we could take home. I thought you wanted your children to learn. I want to learn all I can. Hey, don't look at me. I cannot even lift a penny. So Gelato gave Pistachio his five pennies to buy the book, but made him promise to go straight there and then come right back. Oh, I promise. The moment he lied, something <laughs> strange happened to Pistachio's nose. But we'll get to that later. Hmm, growing boy. Okay, now, who can tell me the population of Luxembourg? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, close, Greg, but you forgot the suburbs. Come young, come all to my puppet down the hole to the fun that you're not supposed to have. I'll do some impressions, but there won't be boring lessons like the ones that you get from your dad. As a tickle. Sorry, tickets cost a nickel, a small price to pay to be glad. So come see my talents. Abandon your parents. It's fun, there's no strings attached. <gasps> no strings? Huh? <gasps> Amazing! <laughs> <laughs> 
a puppet with no strings. <laughs> if you were in the show, I'd be rich. Picture people paying golden coins to watch this little boy As he sings for them and dances as the world's the stringless toy It's so genius just between us, everyone will cry on Encore! Boy, it's no time to be modest, for the world will soon applaud us Look at what you brought us, but Until we're all home. 
no matter what. Better make that corn dog to go. And now it's time for obscure Broadway show tunes with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings an obscure Broadway show tune. Without further ado, from the unknown musical Office Supplies, the heart-rending love song, Where Have All the Staplers Gone? We don't have much time before the big meeting. No. No, we don't. Have you seen the scissors, miss? They're in the bottom drawer. I tried that drawer, but they're there no more. That's odd. I know I thought for sure. Have you seen the masking tape? It's right next to the phone. <sighs> That's what I thought, but now it's not. I guess I should have known oh, Where have all the staplers gone? What happened to our paper clips? The ballpoint pens are gone again They're gone again The sticky pads have lost their stick Do you remember when?
not sung, you're not sung, you're more tough, you're more tough, you'll win big, big really big, you'll play rough, 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 you don't need, you don't need, need your father's love, no need to listen to your dad, you know enough, you've got gold, minus one, you'll get paid, you'll have fun, oops, On his own, I can't give up. Have you seen him, or am I out of luck? He needs a dad to help him make it through. And since that's who I am, that's what I'm gonna do. You? It's true. The bookseller told Gelato that she had seen a strange wooden boy headed for the waterfront. This troubled Gelato, who was afraid Pistachio might fall into the sea and float off like driftwood. He thanked the woman and was off. You're not broke. You're not broke. You're just close. You're just close. You haven't spent all of your gold. You stole most. But even if you run out of your stuff, no need to listen to your dad. You know enough. Again! Ha! This is my lucky night! Oh no! I can't go home to Gelato with nothing! Good thing there's one game where you can win riches beyond your wildest dreams! But we only have one gold coin left! That's all it takes, Pistachio. One gold coin. and get it wrong, well, you lose everything. All right. <laughs> For ten gold coins, here is question number one. In the story of the lost sheep, how many sheep ran away? Hey, I know this. Just one. What? Oh, but... <laughs> That, that is correct. You, uh, win ten gold coins. But if you continue to the next question, you could win a hundred gold coins. A hundred gold coins? Of course, you risk losing the ten. Do you want question two? Question two! Question two! All righty then. For a hundred gold coins, here is question number two. In the story of the lost sheep, why did the shepherd leave the 99 to go off and search for the one lost sheep? I can't believe it. I know this one too. Because he was a good shepherd, and he loved all his sheep. C correct. You, you just won a hundred gold coins. <coughs> of course, question three is worth a thousand. A thousand? Yes, yes, question three! Where did we get these questions? He knows them! Yes, I know them because Gelato... Who? My father! Pistachio! Gelato! Gelato! He's 
looking for me. He didn't forget about me after all. I'm coming, Father! Right after I win the gold, make him proud of me. Don't we take naps and come back when you're ready? I'm ready now. Fire away! Oh, we will. <laughs> For a thousand gold coins, here is question number three. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Huh? I don't know that! Nobody knows that! Then you shouldn't have risked everything. But you said you wouldn't steer me wrong! No. We said, why would we steer you wrong? And the answer is... Five gold coins. <laughs> High five! No hands, numbskull. Pistachio had a choice to make. He knew that telling the truth was the right thing to do. But if he did, the blueberry would know that Pistachio was the reason Gelato was lost. So, he lied. Uh, my father is a fisherman. And we were out catching the largest fish you've ever seen. Remember what happened the first time Pistachio lied? <laughs> oh! oh! Is that really why your father was out at sea? Um, yep. That's the whole truth. What's happening? What am I gonna do? I can't go through life like this. I'll get used for a coat rack. How do I get my nose back to normal? You must listen to your father, Pistachio. What? How do you know my name? Gelato loves you, and he wants what is best for you. You must learn from his teaching, or you will never be happy. Well, if you know so much about me, why don't you just tell me what I should do next? You know what you should do. Listen to your father. Tell the truth. Well, I must go. A good friend needs my help. Au revoir! Don't give up hope! I know. If I can find Gelato's workshop, maybe that cricket will know what to do. <laughs> this is crazy. My nose keeps throwing me off balance. Hey, what do you do? I'm walking here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Why well, hey there, cricket? I am not a cricket! I am a caterpillar! Silly cricket. Huh? Cricket? I am not a pistachio! You are alive! I'm looking for gelato! Me too! That is why I left home all by myself in this big, mean, caterpillar-eating world! I don't eat caterpillars. Good. I hear we are quite tasty. 
Who's with the ducklings? Oh, a good friend is helping me out. No, I'm a blueberry, but I get that all the time. <coughs> no, I've never played Monopoly, but I'll give it a go. What is this story with your smeller? My what? Your nose! It looks like a sapling! Oh, it's a long story. Not as long as that hunker sticking out of your face! Cricket, gelato is lost and it's all my fault! Why are you smiling? Gelato would be very pleased. What? Why? Because you are doing what he said. I told you to take responsibility for your mistakes. That means you listened. He would be so proud of you right now. Oh, goody goody gumdrops! Where are you taking us now, horsey? Horsey? Hello, horsey. Oh, dear! a big fish. And we're still alive? Oh, you can stay alive inside a fish for two or three days. Trust me, I know. Help me look for some angels. Wait, I hear something. It sounds like music. That does not sound like angel music. It sounds... Italian! We should have listened to what Mama told us. When it was bedtime, she cuddled and hold us. And say, boys, please remember your poor Uncle Clark. Never take meatballs to see after dark. They look a little like gelato. Yeah, I'd say more Brando or De Niro. found Gelato's long-lost brothers! Mamma mia! A sorry old uncle set out with the meatball Rolling the stormy seas just after nightfall And so he discovered this fact so infernal Great fish that love meatballs are also nocturnal But we didn't listen for pride or for spite we set out a rowing with meatballs at night And just like our uncle, oh God rest his soul For want of our meatballs, a fish ate us whole It makes me miss my father even more Don't you get me crying so, so children, please listen to your dads and mamas As they tuck you in, in your footy pajamas Their wisdom will save you from trouble, no question Awaking up inside a fishy's intestine We're sorry, mama, that we didn't listen Our hearts are now heavy, our faces they glisten and that we took meatballs to see in the night. <gasps> Gelato! What, huh? Who said my name? Father? Pistachio? Father! Pistachio! Cricket! Your nose! Oh, Dad, they spent the five cents and I went and I tried to win more money than I lost and I almost drowned and then I lied and I almost crashed because there was no horsey till I got eaten by this fish. 
are true. I am so, 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 so sorry. It's okay, Pistachio. Who's with the ducklings? They're in good hands. Oh, the park place with the hotel. That's $1,500, please. <laughs> I prayed that I would find you again someday. So did I. Hey, we're starving here. Let's eat. Oh, I almost forgot. Pistachio, Cricket, these are my brothers. How have you stayed alive all these years? Ah, this fish. It swallowed our delivery boat filled with meatballs. He loves eating Italian. Including us. Uh, it's not so bad, really. While we try to get home, we eat and we sing. And sing and eat. You know what I'm saying? I bet you do. I bet you know what I'm saying. And we got loads of oil for the lamps. Keeps the mood lighting going, you know? Hmm. We gotta do something about that nose. That's why I always say, never leave home without your tools. I have never heard you say that. I always say it starting now. Whoop. Right. 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 Good, nice. Boy, I'm starving. Where's all the food? Oh, we got plenty of food. Hey, guys, we're out of food. We're gonna die! Oh, Pistachio, I'm so sorry. I wanted so much more for your life than this. I wanted zoo trips and juggling lessons and... Hey, we could always eat the castor oil. What are you, nuts? Castor oil makes you throw up. Forget about it. At that moment, Pistachio had an idea that could save them all. Hey, everybody, if we could open and dump all these barrels of castor oil, then maybe the fish will throw up. Quick, roll all the barrels down here where my father's tools are. Wait, the crow's nest. If we drop the barrels from that height, they'll break and splash all over his stomach. I don't know. I think the barrels are too strong to break. Pistachio. Dad, I know wood. I am wood. Yes, but I made you. Trust me. It was the moment of truth. Pistachio had to choose between what he thought was best and what his father knew was best. Okay, Dad. He chose wisely, and he listened. Here we go! Hey, it's not working. I really thought it would work. And now we got no food, and just a little oil in the lamp. Oh, oh, great. See that? Now we're in the dark. Wow. Someone's really hungry. Was that your stomach, Espresso? That was not my stomach. Hey, Dorito. Hey, it wasn't me. Wait, could that be? Here we go. Somebody pick up the cricket. I thought you were a caterpillar. Whatever! Oh, of me! <gasps> that was disgusting! I smell like linguine with clam sauce. Hey, and meatballs. Good thinking, Pistachio. You're a great listener. Thanks, Dad. Well, now what do we do? We are in the middle of the ocean. Still got your tools? Always. Let's build a raft. We can use the canvas for a sail. Just tell me what to do, Dad. I promise I'll listen closely. Look at this guy. Yeah, what a bright boy. So instead of Pistachio getting his own way, he got something even better. He became part of a real family. And it was all because he listened to his father. Wow, Dad. I love it. It's from the museum gift shop. Happy birthday, Pistachio. And so Gelato, Pistachio, all his brother ducklings, and Cricket... Caterpillar! You 
are my hero. Live happily ever after. A mother and a father know the ways to live life right. So listen, little children, and your days will turn out bright. So listen, little children, and your life will turn out bright. Isn't that a great story, Bob? It sure was. Uh, uh, Larry, what's everybody doing here? Oh, well, I invited the cast to come check out the new kitchen. What do you think, guys? I love what you've done with the place. Baloo. Very tasteful. An ambience I can't refuse. Uh, guys, it's a throw pillow and blue walls. Um, if you don't mind, we're trying to wrap up the show. We're over here by Cordy to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Hey, you know, a throw pillow can really make all the difference. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. This is a very fancy computer. That's pretty fancy. You know what you can do with this? You can go online. You can find more blue walls with a computer. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. That's right, Larry. When Pistachio did whatever he wanted to do and didn't listen to Gelato, he ended up in big trouble. But then he learned that Gelato was older and wiser, and that he loved him and wanted what was best for him. Just like my mom and dad, they love me and want what's best for me. That's why I should listen to them. You got it, Liam. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Larry. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> Let it all out, big guy. Let it all out. Well, that's okay. What's the matter with you? Always remember... God made you special. Uh, and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Oh, I love that pillow. What? This is a fancy place. And now it's time for Schoolhouse Polka with Laddie. The part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a Schoolhouse Polka. Whether, 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 whether you like it or not. Whether, 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 whether is cold, warm, and hot. Two, 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 two of my favorite toys. I'm bringing two, 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 a place the first one enjoys, and I like it too. Homophones, homophones, where the crews come cruising down the plane. I know a pear, 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 pear with a pair of really soft shoes. He wears in the pear, 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 pear bushes that easily bruise. I planted rows, 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 rows of a horribly bad smelling rose. Now no one knows, 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 knows if the scent will be leaving my nose, but most likely no. Oh, homophones, homophones, where the toads are towed out on the plane. Whether, whether you like it or not. Whether, 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 whether is cold, warm, and hot. This has been Schoolhouse Polka with Larry. Tune in next time to hear Larry sing. What happened to my preposition? I took it on an expedition. Put it by the thing. I keep my fishing. Got infected with a skin condition. And? I'm a pronoun, they're a pronoun, he's a pronoun, she's a pronoun. Wouldn't you like to be a pronoun too? And it was the biggest, bluest, cleanest, brightest, quickest, newest, roundest, nicest, softest, tallest, toughest, lightest, smoothest, kindest, flattest, tightest, most amazing adjective I'd ever seen. And I'm done. Interjections? Adverbs? Uh, no. All righty. Hey. 
And now it's time for the Veggie Tales Christmas Party, the part of the show where we join our veggie friends at their annual Christmas party. Well into an evening of caroling and fun, the caterer has yet to arrive, and the guests are quite hungry. Man, I'm starving! I'm so hungry, I can eat a reindeer. Oh, yeah? Well, I could eat 12 reindeer and a sled. Oh, yeah? Well, hey, Bob, we got any Ritz bits? I'm sorry, Pa, uh, not yet. The food's not here yet. Hey, look, everybody. It's Oscar, the Polish caterer, with the food. Hey! Hello, everyone. I hope you're hungry. Oh, thank goodness you're here, Oscar. What took you so long? The Kowalski wedding. Those people eat like you wouldn't believe. We believe. Well, what'd you bring us? What I bring you? What I bring you? I'll tell you what I bring you. The first Polish Christmas dish I bring to the party. A boiled potato top with dill weed. The second Polish Christmas dish I bring to the party. Two steamed pierogies. Uh, what's a pierogi? It's a dough wrapped around meat. Oh! And a boiled potato top with dill weed. The third Polish Christmas dish I bring to the party. What's a guamki? It's cabbage, wrapped around meat. Oh. <laughs> Two steamed pierogies and a boiled potato top with dill weed. The fourth Polish Christmas dish I bring to the party. Four big paprikas. Now, what is a paprika? It's a bell pepper stuffed with meat. I see. Three simmered guamkis. Two steamed pierogies and a boiled potato top. It's pretty much just meat. Oh. Four big paprikas. Three simmered guamkis. Two steamed pierogies. And a boiled potato top with dill weed. The six Polish Christmas dish I bring to the party. Six fried hoose chickies. Oh, let me guess. Something in the meat family? Actually, it's a delightful pastry with a thin flaky crust. Ooh. Five smoked kill. Paprikas, three simmered clunkies, two steamed pierogies, and a boiled potato top with dill weed. Oh, Oscar, I'm getting kind of full. The seventh Polish Christmas dish I bring to the party. Seventh pitted prunes. I don't like prunes. With this food, you'll need them, son. Oh, is that right? Uh-huh. Six fried hoose cheekies. Five smoked kale bosses. Oi! Four big paprikas, three simmered guampies, two steamed pierogies, and a boiled potato top with dill weed. I'm gonna bust the eighth Polish Christmas dish I bring to the party. Eight poppy seed cakes. Poppy, poppy, poppy. There's no place like home. Seven pitted prunes, six fried hoose cheekies. Christmas party. Tune in next time to hear Oscar say... Anybody want to lick the spoon? And now it's time for Silly Songs with Letty, the part of the show where Letty comes out and sings a silly song. Got the munchies on that fateful night, round 8 o'clock. So I phoned in a pizza for delivery. But I had a feeling that something wasn't right, because I waited for hours and no pizza. I 
I set the table with a paper plate. How would I know that it'd be late? It's taken so long, where could it be? Had a 30 minute guarantee. Pizza Angel, please come to me. Did they just forget? Should I have ordered on the internet? Ready for dinner, now I'm not so sure. I think my soda's room temperature. expectation, but it was the saddest sight I ever saw. I could still smell the sweet aroma of deep dish goodness, but the box was empty. Your house number was broken, so I couldn't find you. I was getting kind of hungry, so I ate, ate your pizza. So, sorry about that. You don't need to tip me or anything. Never forget you, Pizza Angel. And now it's time for the latest dance craze with Jean Claude and Philippe, the part of the show where Jean Claude and Philippe come out and teach us the latest dance craze. Hello, boys and girls. I am Jean Claude P. And I am Philippe. Get ready to learn the latest dance craze sweeping the nation. So, Jean Claude, where do we start? After you, Philippe. After you. We're a couple of shipper little French peas. Most of the veggies totally agree. -y. And when we're feeling really, really happy, we, we do, do the hopperina. You may ask yourself, what is the hopperina? And how do I do the hopperina? What am I missing out on? Will people like me if I fail to grasp it? Should I just eat a bonbon and go back to bed? That's totally normal. Come down and we will show you. You don't need much to do the hopperina. It won't take too much time to explain it. Fuzzy slippers on your feet. Bunny ears upon your brain. Not to the hopperina. Okay, now that we've got on bunny slippers and ears, what we're going to do is take a hop to the left. Left, beautiful. Now, take a hop to the right. Right. Try the end. You've got it. Hop to the left. We do the hopperina. Then hop to the right. I love the hopperina. Back to the left. And do it once again. Uh. Ooh, hopperina. That's it. Amazing! You have mastered the dance so quickly! Let's keep going! Hop to the left! We do the hop arena! Then hop to the right! Hold it! Stop hop, the music! Hop, what hop, are you hop, doing? Hop. hop to the left, hop to the right, hop to the left, hop to the right again! This isn't a dance, it's hopscotch! That's hop arena! A dance has to be more involved! You need more steps, more room for interpretation! We have bunny ears! You think it's so easy? Let's see you do it! Alright then! 
No, 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 no. You need the ears and feet. Archibald is a serious asparagus. I believe you'd probably agree with us. The best way to not be a sourpuss. Do the hopperina. Hop to the left. He does the hopperina. He hops to the right. Trying not to do complainer. Back to the left. And do it once again. Uh. Hey, hopperina. This is actually quite fun. Let's see. I hop to the left. Happy hopperina. Then hop to the right. I love the hopperina. Back to the left. I'll do it once again. Uh. Hey, hopperina. Oh, <laughs> This is quite fun! <laughs> um, can I have my ears back? Okay, that's enough! Thank you! <laughs> this is very pleasant! <laughs> this has been the latest dance craze with Jean-Claude and Philippe. Tune in next time to hear Jean-Claude say... I am embarrassed for you! And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. So without further ado, Silly Songs with Laddie. The Water Buffalo Song Everybody's got a water buffalo Your are the fats but mine is slow Oh, where'd we get them? I don't know But everybody's got a water buffalo say everyone's got a water buffalo and everyone does not have a water buffalo. We're going to get nasty letters saying, where's my water buffalo? Why don't I have a water buffalo? And are you prepared to deal with that? I don't think so. Just stop being so silly. This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie sing. Everybody's got a baby kangaroo. You're the big but mine. Broccoli, celery, got